all be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a very brief short prayer. I call on, we start with a Christian prayer, we end with a Muslim prayer. Shall we all call Bishop Akore to lead us in opening prayer, please? Yes, sir. Please, shall we stand as we pray? Lord, we thank you very much for this wonderful morning, the morning that you have made that we must rejoice in it. It's a thing of joy to be in the meeting of Zenith. They have always done well, directors done well, shareholders done well, customers are doing well. And so, my God, King of glory, we want your hand to be in this meeting today because we believe wherever you are there will be peace the peace of god that passes all understanding must reign and dwell remain in the hearts of the people so that this meeting will go well the meeting shall be successful that we live here happy in the name of jesus Lord, I use this opportunity. Your daughter and the husband that left this world, I commit them, Lord, into your care. What happened in that AGM shall not happen in this AGM. Yeah. My Lord, as your servant, I decree, what happened in that AGM shall never happen in this AGM. Yeah. And so by the authority of God in me, Lord, I cover the hall with the blood of Jesus Christ. That the peace and the safety of God will be upon the people. Amen. And so, Lord, control, control the directors, particularly the chairman, giving the wisdom to be in charge, fully in charge of this meeting of today, Amen. so that we go home happy. Amen. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Shall we all be seated? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, I start with the introductions. On my right, it's only when you are quiet that you will hear the introduction of your board members. On my immediate right is the managing director, Peter Mambo. <laughs> Sitting next to him is deputy managing director, Mrs. Adora Moje. Thereafter, you have Gabriel Upe, followed by Mr. Ahmed Umar Shaibu, subsequently followed by Mr. Jeff Ifeini. Then on my left, you have Deputy Managing Director Ebenezer Onyago, followed by uh, Chukuka a will make up a professor. And subsequently followed by Tammy Tokbe, fashion or executive director of the bank. Next is Mr. Dennis Olisa, executive director of the bank. And again, last but not the least, Professor Oyewusi Ibida Kobe. And um, finally, Engineer Mustafa is my extreme right. Then, of course, to my immediate left, the guy who directs the affairs of this meeting, Company Secretary Michael Otu. I wish to introduce members of the Audit Committee of the Bank, namely Mrs. Adebinkwe Balogu, <laughs> Professor Obika, and Michael Ajayi. We have
present also at this meeting our external auditors. KPMG Professional Services. Can you wave? Okay, they are there on our left. Also present here are our external consultants, Mrs. PricewaterhouseCoopers. Can you wave, please? There. Okay, very good. Then our registrars for many years, Veritas registrars. Could you wave your hand, please? Okay, there they are. Good. Now, of course, the apex institution in the country, the banker to all banks, bankers to the government, the Central Bank of Nigeria. Wave your hand, please. There they are. Then Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. Wave your hand, please. There they are. Then the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Could you wave your hand, please? Okay. You are all welcome to this meeting. My name is Jimovia. Thank you very much. Now, I know that my Kutu's applause was even louder than mine. We, we, we. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the next item five, business of the day. Notice of the meeting, and I call on the company secretary to read out the notice convening this meeting. Thank you, Mike. I'll be reading from page 10 of our annual report. Notice of annual general meeting. 20, 20, sorry. Notice is hereby given that the 28th annual general meeting of Zeni Bank PLC holds at the Civic Center Uzum Bambadiwe Street, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 9 a.m. On Monday, the 18th day of March, 2019, to transact the following business. Ordinary business. One, to present and consider the bank's solitary accounts for the financial year ended 31st December 2018. The reports of the directors, auditors, and audit committee therein. Two, to declare a final dividend. Three, to re-elect the following directors who retire by rotation, Professor Chukuka and Wemeka, Mr. Dennis Olisa, and General Mustafa Belu. Four, to authorize directors to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Five, to elect members of the audit committee. Special business, to consider, and if thought fit, to pass the following as ordinary resolution. Six, that the remuneration of directors for the year ending December 31, 2019, be and is hereby fixed at 20 million only. Data this 19th day of February 2019. Notes. Proxy. A member of the company entitled to attend and vote at this meeting is entitled to appoint a proxy in his stead. All instruments of proxy. Thank you. Okay. So, by order of the board, Michael Osila Maut. Okay. I I always continue to repeat, my Kutu receives a louder applause than the chairman. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next item is the chairman's statement. Thank you. The statement, having this read, so it's taken as read. Thank you. The next item, D, is auditor's report. I wish to invite the bank's auditors, KPMG Professional Services, to present their report on the audited accounts of the bank to members. KPMG, sir.
Good morning. Mr. Chairman, the Board of Directors of Zenith Bank PLC, distinguished shareholders, the auditor's report is on pages 68 to 75 of the annual report. Mr. Chairman, I can go on to read the entire report, if so wish. But I will okay. if, um, if the shareholders um, also One second, penny. please. I understand that the shareholders will want KPMD to read the abridged version. Yes, sir. Okay, please, sir, continue the abridged version. Thank you. Thank you, shareholders. The independent auditor's report to the shareholders of Zenith Bank PLC. The report on the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements. The opinion. We have audited the consolidated and separate financial statements of Zenith Bank PLC, the bank, and its subsidiaries, together called the group, which comprise the consolidated and separate statements of financial position as at the 31st of December 2018, and the consolidated and separate statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income the consolidated and separate statements of changes in equity, and the consolidated and separate statements of cash flows for the year then ended, and notes comprising significant accounting policies and other explanatory information, which are set out on the respective pages in the annual report. In our opinion, the accompanying consolidated and separate financial statements give a true and fair view of the consolidated and separate financial position of the bank and its subsidiaries as at the 31st of December 2018 and of its consolidated and separate financial performance and its consolidated and separate cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS, and in the manner required by the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria Act 2011, the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, Cap B3, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and relevant Central Bank of Nigeria CBN guidelines and circulars. On the last page of the audit report, page 75. The report on other legal and regulatory requirements. First, compliance with the requirements of Schedule 6 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. Cap C 20 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept by the bank so far as appears from our examination of those books and the bank's statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income are in agreement with the book of a, books of account. And second, Compliance with Section 27, Subsection 2 of the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, Cap B3, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and the Central Bank of Nigeria Circular, BSD1 of 2004. 1. The bank and group paid penalties in respect of contravention of the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, Cap B3, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, during the year, ended 31st December 2018. Details of the penalties are disclosed in Note 41 to the financial statements. And two, related party transactions and balances are disclosed in Note 37 to the financial statements in compliance with the Central Bank of Nigeria, Circular BSD 1 of 2004. 
the audit report is signed by me, Olua Femi Awotoe, for KPMG Professional Services. It is dated the 31st of January 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is Audit Committee. I call on the chairperson of the Audit Committee of the Bank, Mrs. Adebinkwe Balogu, to present the report of the committee on the audited accounts to members. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Chairman, the report of the audit committee for the year ended 31st December 2018. Oh, sorry, <laughs> page 66. Can I go on then? Thank you. In compliance with the section 359 subsection 6 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act of Nigeria 1990, CAP C20 LFN 2004, we reviewed created and separate financial statements of Zenith Bank PLC for the year ended 31st December 2018 and hereby state as follows. The scope and planning of the audit were adequate in our opinion. Two, the accounting and reporting policies of the group and bank conformed with the statutory requirements and agreed ethical practices. Three, the internal control and internal audit functions were operating effectively. And four, the external auditor's findings as stated in the management letter are being dealt with satisfactorily by the management. Um, the related party transactions and balances have been disclosed in note 37 to the financial statements in accordance with the requirements of the International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS, and the Central Bank of Nigeria directives as contained in the Prudential Guidelines for Deposit Money Banks in Nigeria, and circular on disclosure of insider-related credits in financial statements, BSD stroke one, stroke 2004. This report is dated January 18th, 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. The next item on the agenda is item six, questions and comments. Distinguished shareholders, the report is now before you and we will take comments or questions from some of you that will represent the larger majority. My advice is that we need to be very orderly and respectful to other shareholders. And when we do that, we will be, as many of us as possible, we have opportunity to speak. Okay, so um, let's have the gentleman, elder statesman, Chief Adeshino. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sirs. Good morning, the chairman, members of the El Right Board of Distinguished Eminent Directors. I say good morning to you all. I thank you all for this beautiful performance, despite the problems facing our economy. Thank you for a dividend of two naira fifty kobo. Thank you. I seize this opportunity to appreciate this company, for this bank, for the close use of good corporate governance as preached by Sebastian Oxley of the United States and this is actually helping the inflow 
of capital into our bank. Please keep it up. I note on page 164 that we secured a capital adequacy ratio of 25%, much above the regulatory require requirement of 16% by the Central Bank. I also note the auditor's fees rising from 822 million from 690, 693 million in the previous years. And this is as a result of additional work performance as required by the IFRS 9, 15, and 16. This normally requires additional work. I also note on page 176, we stress out details of operating expenses. I note with concern that training and development, and development dropped from 4 billion to 3.2 billion. Information technology expenses dropped from 12.7 billion to 10.1 billion. And insurance dropped from 6.3 billion to 4.3 billion. I am worried about this because all these things require that our company, our bank, should be, should be improving on all these things, height, IT, and training of uh, staff, which I know the bank does not play with. There are increases in fraud and forgeries from 368 million to 429 million. And uh, notably, our senior prefect of uh, capital intensiveness, Amcon, has taken 25.6 billion at, from uh, 28.5 million in the previous year, it increased from 25.6 billion in the previous year to 28.5 in the new year. Payment of a shortfall of 2016 of 5.4 billion and 4.5 and 4.1 billion of 2017. This monster called Amcon, be buried. Where will it be buried? It is not serving us any purpose any longer. And therefore, it should be extradicted. Now, I take this opportunity to beg for a save our soul. Save our soul demand on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and SEC. The experience which shareholders are now having are terrible. Like uh, the first speaker of the prayer uh, father remarked, we lost two of our eminent shareholders at our immediate last TGM of uh, one of the companies in a traffic uh, accident. What I'm pleading for is that uh, SEC and the regulatory authorities should please see that any company that is uh, taking us outside our stations should do it with insurance cover on shareholders. <laughs> and apart of this, apart from this, 
I'm also begging the, S, uh, the security and exchange control to please see that uh, the, the motivating factors in our economy are addressed. On the 13th of March 2019, the front page of our newspaper national of our business day said that 10% uh, of profit before tax of uh, banks, insurance companies, and uh, pension fund uh, institutions should always go to the national uh, housing fund. This is demoralizing. It is not of any effect to any entrepreneurship move and it discourages uh, business uh, formation. I therefore want the National, National Assembly that has passed this law to please look at it again before it is uh, assented by the president. I also would like to beg the I also would like to beg the say to continue the good job they have started in the probate registry. They are now talking with the probate registry that they should uh, expedite action on the transfer of shares for people who are dead. This has been very good, but we want them to conclude it and take it to a logic conclusion. Like the one which we are talking, when the two uh, people who died are young investors and their children are small, who will pursue their investments for them. Husband, husband and wife died the same day, the same minute. May God repose their souls. So, we, we are begging see the regulatory authorities to work further on this and bail us out. We are aging. And even it is not a matter of age, these ones that died now did not expect it so sudden. And all their life savings have been used in buying shares. Please help us. Thank you. My Thank you. Thank Chief you, Uti Chief. Adishion. Thank you. Thank please. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So let's put our hands together for Chief because he spoke the mind of almost all of you, even if no one says anything again. He's covered us. But we must give opportunity for others to say, let's do some gender balancing. Let's go to the right, and um, we can see the young lady raising her hand there. The, the madam on blue or something? Yes. Yes, madam. So we need to balance. Uh, congratulations. A few days ago, we have women being... Thank you, appreciate sir. appreciate that all over the world. I'm sure you will agree with me. We need to balance this thing up. Madam, please, okay, over sir. to you. Good morning, sir. The chairman, the board of directors, eminent shareholders. Though we are very sad this morning, sir. But we have to say what we have, have in mind before we had the news. Sir... The, my name is Esther Funke Augustine. I belong to God Gift Shareholders Association. Mr. Chairman, the bank have done well this year. And uh, since ever, you have been giving us dividends. But this one is fantastic. We should really appreciate you for it. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, sir, we need to do more than this. And the reason being that we shareholders will be like Oliver Twist who always asks for more. And uh, another thing I want you to consider, I raised it when we did our meeting in Abuja, that uh, we need more ladies on your board. The bones, bones, bones there is too, is too much. So you need to give us another lady on the board. So this is what I have for you this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, shall we all, again, we have to be balancing it. We are going to move to the left. Shall we call on Mokta, please, to, to say Okay. Mr. Chairman. Wait, uh, wait, hold on one second, sir. Okay. It appears the ovation he received, it shows that he's a great man. <laughs> okay, go. Mr. Chairman. Sir, 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 over to you, yes. Mr. Chairman, very respectable chairman, the board and management of our great bank, regulators present, our professional exceptional audio committee members distinguished fellow shareholders good morning my name is alaji otumba Mukhtar Mukhtar, representing the whole of yoruba land also mr chairman my indigo friends also have made me an ochirozo of the whole of Ibo land in addition to a title they gave me the Obong of Calabar, uh, the Obong of uh, uh, this town in Calabar. So three titles, Mr. Chairman. When the time comes, I will send my invitation for your honor. Mr. Chairman, the numbers we are considering today are great numbers. They have proved the exceptional heads of the bank and the group. But Mr. Chairman, before we, behind every number, behind every number, there are human beings. There are people behind those numbers. Either directly or indirectly. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, we must first of all appreciate your own personality for giving us Zenith Bank. We thank you very much for the value you have added to your shareholders over the years. I came across a rat up in the internet. They were saying that, I think he's your friend. He used the same money you, built, you, you, you established Zenith Bank to build a house. Yes. Because I don't know how the man's brain works. But then, they have used that same amount of money to Start then this bank and look at the tremendous achievements you have recorded in trillions, in billions. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we thank you very much. Thank you so much. May the Almighty continue to bless your hands and bless your family. Thank you, sir. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, going through the numbers. For the group and for the bank, you see hard work. Peter Mongo and the team, we thank you very much. Thank you very much for the hard work and the staff of Zenith Bank. For example, you look at the bank's total deposits. It grew by 2.9%. This is very, very impressive in a very, very difficult year. Because most companies have not found it easy in 2018. But our own grew by 2.9%. Also, if you take our profit before tax, it, it did not just grow. It grew by 13.5%. 13, you know, 13.5. One, one, it's big money. Mr. Chairman, not only that, 
the profit after tax also grew from 153 billion naira to 165 billion naira haba <laughs> Peter, how do you achieve this? How did you and your team achieve this, please? We are very grateful, Mr. Chairman. That's why I was coming from Abuja. I learned two of our members have died. Before I don't want to join aircraft, I say no. I must absorb all those shocks and come. Because, you know, most of us who don't like flying. But we have to, because, uh, you know, for a bank like Zenis, we have to take whatever risk it is to come and celebrate. Mr. Chairman, the group results also showed us strong performance. And we're very happy about it. You capped everything, Mr. Chairman, by proposing a dividend of 280 kobo, 250 kobo. You had paid an interim dividend of 30 kobo in the course of the year. And now you have you have, you have proposed 250 kobo. 2 naira, 80 kobo. Which bank can beat this feat? None! None! And the happy thing about it is the consistent dividend, dividend policy of the bank. Very consistent. We have been enjoying dividend. Uh, if you see the shares I bought, and the, and the yield I got. <laughs> you see the asset I acquire, you'll be surprised. Yes! Mr. Jemovia and your team, thank you very much. You have built our lives. We're thank happy you, about sir. that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Sir. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank the corporate you, sir. social responsibility of the bank have demonstrated that you are not only after the financial numbers, but the economic growth of the host communities and the larger environment. Thank you, sir. This is philanthropy. The amount you have spent is the largest in the history of CSR in Nigeria. We are very happy about that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Put your hands together for Mokta. Mokta. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, Thank lastly, please, lastly, lastly, let us celebrate the company secretariat. That is why I call him the remarkable Mike Otto. Because he has been doing a wonderful job. Very hardworking, committed. Thank you, sir. Professional. Thank, and thank you, sir. Synergized. Mr. Chairman, all the shareholders love this gentleman. We wish him well. I will wish him. Prosperous years ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. May God Thank bless you. us all. all. All the best. All the best. Okay. So, um, we will now look at the right-hand side. Uh, we have had tremendous performance that we also need to acknowledge. On the right here, we have Chief Ngosu, um, who had been very, very well, uh, respectfully performed over time. So, Chief Mosu, sir, over to you. The chairman of Zenith Bank, Thank you. Jim, Mr. Jim Ovia, CON. Thank you. The directors of Zenith Bank. We have had some very important issues. I just want to have two or three points to raise to assist uh, the performance of the bank. It is, my name is Sasson Ngosu, KSS, National Coordinator Emeritus Independent Shareholder Association of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Now, Chief Adeshino made mention of the Amcon issue. This is an issue that we've been crying over for a very long time on the Amcon issue. The previous year, we paid about 200 
I mean, to, to 25.6 billion naira. This year, we are paying 28.7 or thereabout. Now, the fact is that this has gotten into the head of Amcon itself, trying to elongate their tenor. At the inset of Amcon, the tenor is supposed to be 10 years. And thereafter, they will leave the stage. But they've been collecting, collecting, collecting. And now they are continuing to collect. And now they've gone to the National Assembly to ask for elongation of the tenor. We shareholders are not comfortable with this because if you go into the workability of Amcon, we will see certain things that will not be palatable to the investment and to their duties to those they've collected money from. We are pleading to very sound minds around that they should help us in talking to the government that a law is a law. We embrace it because they told us it's going to be 10 years. And it should remain. They should disband Amcon and let us move on. The second thing is to Central Bank. Last upper year, we had a cash reserve that we cannot touch of six, 555 billion naira. This year, under consideration, we have 625 billion naira which is trapped there. You cannot touch it. It's a compulsory reserve. What are we actually getting from this money? Because if such money is released to the banks or in agreement with the banks, definitely they are going to make more money. And as far as we are concerned, we want more dividends. Am I right? Yes. So central bank should take note and listen to the cry of the investors. Without the investors, in the banks, there probably will not be central bank to the level it is today. Now, coming back to what Chief Adesinyan said, I want us to take it from the level that we pay Amcon, we pay NDIC, we pay all these people. It's all from the profit of the company. Now, if the president assents to this bill, it then means, Mr. Chairman, Take it from the angle of the profit before tax that we have made. 10% of that. It's so much that is going to even affect our dividends. It's going to affect investors' interests. It's going to discourage people coming to invest in this country. But my research said, by yesterday I was still researching on it, that the National Housing Fund uh, decree or act or anything stipulates that bank will pay certain things. That is just being echoed. But I want the banks to go back. You have an association. And in America, this kind of bill would have died because the banks will come together and lobby the legislators to kill this. In this country, nobody does that. And at the end of the day, it's yes, sir. I don't think we have gone beyond yes, sir, on issues. Every hand must be on deck. We have condemned it through newspapers. We'll fight it, and we'll continue to talk about it. But sometimes, if you have somebody like a CON, with, without mentioning any particular name, is the commander of the Order of the Niger. And such person should also assist, because most of these legislators defer to us. They have a fat account, big account in Zenit. And we have opportunity of talking to them to have a right thinking in investment. This country needs a lot of investment. Mr. Chairman, totally on page, on page 76 and 147 of the annual report, this, I believe, they are very important things that we should look at. Now, there we have a very significant decreased uh, 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 position of our impairment, but the major ingredient which I want to raise now is the auditor's position on this. Uh, the shareholders will require a further explanation in relationship to IFRS 9, an auditor's statement of page 69, that the group impairment losses on financial assets are now based on expected credit loss. So there's need for us to understand this model rather than the incurred loss model. So there's a difference between these two. 
which may really affect the returns on the bank. And I think it's very important and significant for such an explanation. And if we go to the capital adequacy ratio, yes, we have done something there, but we also need some, the management should give us, through the chairman, give us some explanation to understand the working. I very much appreciate the pronouncement of uh, Zenit that the loan base will now move to smaller holders. Because, Mr. Chairman, the fact remains that the smaller holders fears government, they fear litigation, and they are always committed to the integrity of whatever loan they have collected. And that's why our loan portfolio came down a little bit. We are not alone in it. So many other comp banks have been crying about this. So it is very, very important. Mr. Chairman, this morning when we came in, we saw a very seamless accreditation of shareholders. And I think the registrars have done very well in ensuring that it is seamless. And I can see nobody has come to complain to me that I did not get a gift. And everything was there enough to go around the shareholders. So that's very, very important that we mention that. Thank you, it thank you. It is also you, very sir. important that the, the sitting arrangement, you will recall that last year we had a problem. But look at the sitting arrangement today. I think the problem is not there as it was last year. Am I right? Yes. Good. Mr. Thank Chairman, finally, you see us here. We are part of your family. And we appreciate you any time you are there to preside over. And we like owner manager. And that's why we have been enjoying our investment. Mr. Chairman, you know, like you said at the beginning, you have SSS here and all this and that. You are very difficult to reach. And therefore, whoever is the messenger of the shareholders is the one the shareholders will applaud, not that the chairman is not important. You are the biggest important person for us. But the messenger is the one we applaud so that we'll continue to deliver your message to us. Am I right? Yes. Thank you, so, sir. Thank in most you, cases, sir. very finally, in most cases, we don't want to hear the mention of police, SSS, and all this and that in annual general meeting. This is our platform. So, you are rest assured that we will continue to support you. You are rest assured that if there is anything, you are very safe in our midst. Thank Nothing you, will sir. happen to you because you've been baking a good cake for us to eat. We congratulate you on this occasion of the 28th annual Thank General Thank you, meeting. sir. God Thank bless you. Zenit. God Thank bless you. Nigerian shareholders. Thank you very much, sir. Now, let me make a very, very brief comment. First, let me thank shareholders. You've been very orderly and also very respectful to your fellow shareholders who spoke. And I notice that when any of them speaks, none of you ever interrupt them at all. That's so orderly and very respectful. And I do hope we'll continue in that same spirit. And finally, I will just, uh, you know, we move from left, we move from right. Now, we move to the left. I see the gentleman there raising up his hand. That's, uh, that, that looks like non Awu, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Non Awu is there. Yeah. yeah. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Please, you have the floor. Thank you. The chairman, other members of the board, very distinguished fellow shareholders, including those of them who are in the board's quarters. I hope they can hear me. For the records, my names are Nona Au. Let me share the story of James. Most times people don't remember that Jim is coming in from James. And you remember the story of the three apostles and they were on the mountain. And they Please don't blame me, blame the mic. And they wanted them to be permanently here uh, because there was transfiguration. 
Uh, I've also heard so many comments, uh, though I had to wait downstairs to also look at what the arrangements were. Uh, hence, I had to come up. You know. But having heard the uh, story of transfiguration, let me start from the remark that you made as in chairman's statement. And you said that the chunk of the dividend will be going to you. And I said, ah, no, Jim, this will not be a true story. Uh, because no matter how much we own, uh, just two of you would take much more than so the chunk is going to I thought the, the, the story would have been the chunk would go into me but you are going to get something good but as a publicly quoted company uh, looking at page 5 of this account that has the summary of all the indicators I didn't find anywhere that your share price is listed and I know that one of the things that you look at even as chairman, even when you are not, it's the share price. Uh, because I've also heard you talk about the story of being the most capitalized bank as far as Nigeria is concerned. And capitalization calculation cannot be taken in isolation with the share price. So one of the things I'll be hoping that you do going forward is that share price must be reflected. If I were even to advise, I would ask you to go to the five, five year summary put the share price because that itself helps to calculate a number of indicators, including your returns on, on dividend. I will plead that you allow me to read page 58. On page 58, I am not too sure as to what the performance assessment was supposed to tell me as an investor. But if you look at the second to the last paragraph there, he said the board should ensure that the external auditors report on the bank risk practices. I'm not sure that I understand it because I cannot find that relating to either the statement from the uh, external uh, from the uh, audit committee. Uh, so I want some explanation made because for me, that is critical. I also went further down and I find that the last but one line, he said, directors will be, before then, he said, prepared and will be made available. I'm not too certain that what we are looking at when you are assessing is the presentation that we are making. So I again want to be educated because I'm open to learning. But having said that, I also think that... Uh, Looking at page 54, which I'll be combining with page 8. There you talked about the performances of the subsidiaries. That's the other banks and the non-bank. But nowhere in this annual account, given the size of directors that the group has, that you mention anything as to who sits on those other institutions. And I think that this is very essential uh, and the reason that it's essential and other reason that will be mentioning is that when you buy shares, you are basically buying confidence. And the amount of confidence that you get determines how much more you'll be ready to do in terms of pricing. One of the things I've also heard among commentators, including the program that I run, oh, why is any bank lower price than another bank? And each time you talk to other person, they tell you, sorry, we don't think that Zenith Bank is disclosing enough. Uh, so, yes. There's no end to disclosure, but there are some disclosures that also helps your cause, and this is one of them, and I was hoping that that is what you will do. I'm talking about disclosure, and sometimes conflict of in disclosure. If you look at page 20 of this account, and you look at page 235, which is the proxy page, he talked about remuneration, and I want the auditors to take good note of this. They talked about remuneration that you'll be asking us to approve as 20 million naira. But if you go to page 176, remuneration 1.42 billion naira. You go to page 207, chairman's remuneration 28 million naira. So are we approving far less than the chairman himself is earning in terms of remuneration for the board? Again, like I said, when you buy shares, you are buying consistency and full openness in terms of information. When I was going to buy this material, I probably wanted a particular range of 50% cotton, 12% polyester, and any other combination. When you buy shares, you are buying total information. 
and I will be pleading again that lest this information be total. But that is not the only thing that you find. Because interestingly, if you look at page 35, it's indicating directors holding. In a year that eight of the directors moved up their holding, which there is no crime in as fast as they don't buy within the closed period, you will find that the smaller players are exiting the bank. Again, an indication that some level of confidence is also lagging. And I want, again, please let's constantly look at. They may look small, but they tell a lot of story. But let me also uh, mention here, since the issue has been raised earlier on page 38 and 37, uh, looking at the numbers and how they drop in, I think that there will be need, given your size now and given the number of shareholders, to begin to relook your engagement processes. Yes? Uh, the, large, the number is large, but the people who make the share price, with due respect, are the small players. And the more the small players don't make those things happen, uh, the more you continue to be challenged in terms of how you, how you are looked uh, externally. And in that light, I'll be hoping that on page 20, 36, again, the auditors will help you. You don't just give a table of what constitutes director's payment. I will be expecting that that page will be extended by taking director one on one and indicating salary, sitting allowance, director's fee, and also listing. Don't also forget, with due respect, uh, we may be a Nigerian company, but we're playing global. And if you're playing global, the more that we get to meet even higher international standards, the better for us. Because as a nation, and like every other economy, the more money you have from the other side, the faster your development. Okay? And that is why I will be hoping that that will be done. Mr. Chairman, I know that if they mention technology, even before they finish the no in the logic, you probably will be aroused. But technology is not the only thing that runs any business, including here, and I know so. But if you have on page 41, 40, 64 persons who are in top management level and other shareholders don't get to know them, except when they are duped for promotion to become executive director, it also creates a, cha a challenge for you. Even in Nigerian environment, look at the other banks, you'll find that the practice is, is shifting. Half page, one page of the key bakers or co-bakers will be helpful, again, in terms of disclosure. Don't let us build the bank around a few individuals alone. Let people get to know, oh, uh, before, with due respect, I used to also see your position when you, in MBC, and I saw, MBA rather, and I saw the movement in St. Nicholas House. That is what helps people to understand the system. And I'll be hoping that going forward, that will be one of the things that you'll be doing. I am also concerned. I've raised this in 2014 or 2013. I'm not sure. Uh, because I was also time choked, so I couldn't do a little more work. But if you look at page 56 and 57, seven meetings in one day. Seven. And I consider all of them as very serious and essential meetings. Which means, on the average, you have those seven meetings run in 16 hours. Because certainly mom will be firewood, mom will sleep now. And if you then find that three of the directors sit in five of those meetings and begin to doubt the efficiency of those three directors after a particular level. Because diminishing returns will set in, no matter how much stimulant you give them. So we need to again begin to look at how we schedule our meetings if we are going to get value. Uh, it is sufficient for you to be director and sit all through the meetings and make no contribution. But the essence of directorship, I understand, is for you to turn a bad situation to good or turn a good situation to better or turn a better situation to best. And that is one of the things. And interestingly, at least you have a lady on your board. And like my mom would say, may I so rest in peace. Say, no matter how beautiful a lady is, even at 90, and I saw her at 93, and occasionally you see her use pancake because that was what she was. So we must constantly relook at ourselves and say, how do we get 
Is it more beautiful or better beautiful? I don't know which one to use. But beauty cannot be st stagnant. And that is what our performance must also not be. I also look at these accounts on page 138 to 156. And I looked at what our structure, our deposit structure is. First, I must commend the fact that you're trying to push the cost of funds down. Uh, but there's much more we can do in terms of the lower end of, in terms of cost. And I don't know what you're going to do, but if you compare ourselves to our pairs, uh, a few accounts are in already, and you even take it from a nine months position, a few accounts also indicating that we have more work to do, and I'm be hoping that, because the lower our cost, uh, the, lo the higher the bottom line. I will also be hoping on page 172 and 173, that we relook really at the subsidiaries. And the reason I'm saying this is that if you look at page 223, 2010 to date, and I will ask that you permit me to read 223, you will find, you will find with due respect that, yes, what we have in 2018 it's a significant improvement over what we had in 2017. But in terms of the total level of performance of the subsidiaries to the group, this itself is less than 15%, which means we have a major cash cow, and the other ones need to do far more to be able to bring additional items to the table. And interestingly, other than 2013, 2016, 2017, and 2018, in no other year did the performance been in excess of 10 billion naira in terms of profit. And I think that if we do a little more in that regard, uh, the chances are higher that we will also bring, they will bring better items in the total basket. For the future, Mr. Chairman, which is going to be my closing segment, on page 176, auditors, it doesn't make sense for us to have sitting allowance and director's fee lumped together. If you add one additional line and split that, that again will give a better coloration as to what they're doing and also bring better confidence. And the issue of what uh, the cost of servicing our board also becomes clearer. I also think that on page 197, uh, Mike, I know that your office has its extension, or rather the registrar is an extension of your office. But I'll be asking that you also, I'm talking about the company secretary now, let's get a relationship manager or investor relation manager or officer whose principal responsibility will be to liaise a little more. I talked about engagement earlier, if you remember. Uh, because with 36.35 uh, uh, billion, I'm not sure whether it's billion or million now, uh, as on claim dividend, uh, it's one that we must make efforts to push down. And on the final note, Mr. Chairman, and I think this has to do with uh, your, your office. Donation is good. Again, don't forget what I talk about perception. If we give government 50% of our donation in one year and to one item, security, that itself is a challenge. And you know that you understand where I'm going to. Because a number of persons, from what we saw in election in one of the states and what was talked about the bank, we need to be careful. Politicians in Nigeria remember you only when they have something to get from you. But once they get on the other side, it also becomes a chance. So let's try and play center when it comes to all of this. Because in two years, security, we have donated 1.9 billion naira. We need to be careful. Mr. Chairman, because he also concerns you and concerns us, I started by saying those of them in the boys' quarter. Let us be careful because what we are doing when we have a two-layer in terms of venue is that some persons are, have, are having their rights taken away from them. Except you can assure me that somebody on the other floor will be allowed to ask questions so they can also be part of this meeting. 
Yes, I know what will probably be running your mind. But we have passed a level where we will be on first and second floor for an AGM. Let us look at this again. But much more important, Mr. Chairman, some of the people you find here and on the other floor, a number of them are retired. And so they are not using, they are not used to being woken up by 7 o'clock. So when you hold your meeting on a Monday morning, giving traffic in Lagos by 9, you are asking these old men to wake up by 5 o'clock, and that may be counterproductive to the dividend that they are going to get. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And... Um, uh, shall we all shall we all have peace and quiet uh, in the same respectful way you had accorded to your fellow shareholders most of whom have spoken so brilliantly particularly I mean really all of them the chief Adesanya himself Nanawo, Professor Mwosu, so brilliant, we learned so much, you could see, I was, thank you, I was busy taking copious notes, there's a lot to learn, for which I will remain eminently very grateful. Shall we now allow the MDC the opportunity to respond to this very question? Thank you, sir. So, MDC Please respond as much as you can to various questions. You also took copious notes the same way I did. Some that you had forgotten, I will remind you. We must answer. So, MDC, yeah, MDCEO, please take over the mic. You can, you can use mine. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you need to speak loud. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. It's okay now. You need to speak. Thank you. I was thank them. Thank you very much for your questions, most distinguished shareholders. I'm very happy to respond as follows. The first, if you permit me to, I will just stand. Okay, the first had to do with the Chief Adeshion mentioned the issue of dropping operating expenses. I would like to say that's a deliberate strategy that consistently wants to be very, very efficient in terms of uh, cost management. And he even talked specific on trading and IT costs. The important thing is what value are we getting? We will consistently continue to train our people in the most efficient manner. So thank you very much, uh, Chief, for that. On the issue of expected loss and incurred loss, uh, Chief uh, Sonny Woods, if you check page 106 to 138, we basically itemize what exactly is required by IFRS. We have shifted from what we used to do then under the end guide, when we talk about incurred loss. You have this known as done by to a more forward-looking model, and that is the expected credit loss model. It's actually the requirement of IFRS. Then not I will, I have almost about 20 pages here. But I will try to address them as much as possible. You focus more on disclosures and you talk a lot on governance, which I sincerely thank you. On the issue of uh, share price, I think it's actually it's very well noted and we have it on our website that our share price uh, history. But we've noted what you said that it will be very useful to also have it in the uh, on the way we have for page five, as you mentioned. On the issue of the board and management of our subsidiaries, we've noted that, and uh, we'll also have that in uh, we'll consider that for the future. 
And when we talk about the issue of director's fees and emolument, essentially what you have is you have the fees, because where you look, if you look at page 20, where you have 20 million as director's fees and page 207, what is added there is other allowances, which is basically sitting allowance. And that's really, so if you look at the highest paid director or the chairman, what's added is just the sitting, sitting allowance for the non executive director. Under the table of emolument, I think you basically summarize it that there is no end to this million. If we start putting the salary of every director, we itemize it. This is our annual account. We might need double of that. But we'll see how to enrich that particular uh, page of table of uh, emolument. Then we talk about the contributions of subsidiaries as uh, 15%. If you look at, we've never disguised the fact that the bank itself is the core and the cornerstone of our business. The bank is 29 years old today, but if we check our oldest uh, subsidiary, the one we have in Ghana and the UK, they are just about 10, 11 years. So we cannot expect their profitability to even be close to the that of the bank. And I think they've recorded tremendous progress from less than 3% contribution Today, we are talking of 15% contribution. I think that's a very significant thing. Then on the issue of cost of funds, certainly it can be better, and it will also strive to continue to improve on our cost of funding. But I want to note that it's very remarkable that our cost of funds drops from average of 5.2% to 3.1%. And it's also reflected in the surface we have a full-time investor relations department. If you check our website, you will have the details there. All the contact details is a full-fledged uh, department that handles that. And uh, my quote to the company secretary, actually Veritas registrars is an independent uh, company. They just manage our uh, registrars. But we have an investor relations department. If you have any issues concerning your shares, Please contact them and they will attend them to them. The share price history, we also have that in, uh, on, our, on our website. You will see it there for over five years. I think it's also there. So I want to thank you all for this opportunity to address some of the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, MDCU. Shall we put our hands together for the managing director? So the next item on this agenda is um, resolutions. In line with section 224 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 1990 as amended, some shareholders have demanded that voting on some resolutions at this meeting be by poll. We will, however, reflect their votes on the, in the records as indicated in the proceed cards while we proceed with the business of the day. We will now proceed to vote on various resolutions for the meeting. To enable us save time, I will be reading out the resolutions while calling on members to second same. Those for or against the resolutions we so indicate. These resolutions are therefore as follows. One, adoption of accounts, be it resolved, that the report of the directors together with the balance sheet and profit and loss account for the 12 months ended December 31, 2018, be and are hereby approved. Seconder, yeah, the gentleman right here. All right. My name is Elijah Kabiru Tambad, shareholder from Sokoto State. I hereby second it. Thank you. Those four, those four, and those against, none. So it's carried. Item number two, dividend. Be it resolved that a final dividend of two naira fifty kobo per share, making a gross dividend of seventy-eight uh, billion. 
234 So we'll push ahead for the next item please Okay um, what do we have there Okay that's out of the profit income tax Okay next item Sorry Okay we need to read out Sorry. Okay, the entire resolutions need to be read, read, read out, okay? Okay. Okay, that's out of the profit after tax. Okay, is there any other item? All right, okay, the company secretary is actually um, trying to give some clearer directions that this represents. Uh, profit after tax for the 12 months ended 31st December 2018B and is hereby declared payable on pro rata basis to the shareholders holding fully paid ordinary shares registered in the books of the company at the close of business on the 8th, of, 8th day of March 2019, bringing the total dividend for the financial year ended December 31st, 2018, to 2 Naira 80 Kabo, a gross dividend of 87,910,000,000 uh, and 182,000. Uh, we just have to be as accurate as we can. Okay? So we now have 87 billion nine hundred and it's ten million okay this is quite a very long list yeah okay so seconded by who we second okay the the madam on blue Sir. is seconding please mrs bc bakar okay. is the name and i second the motion Okay, now those for and those against now carried. Item number three, re-election of retiring directors. In line with section 58, that's 259 please, all right, of the companies and allied matters at Kama. 190 as amended and the following directors retire by rotation at at this meeting professor chikuka iwameka dennis olisa engineer mustafa bello next being eligible for re-election and willing they have offered themselves for re-election. Okay. In line with Section 261 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, I will move that the directors be elected on a single resolution of members. Who is to second? Seconder. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, so the gentleman there Shama, is thank actually you for, seconded. Shama, thank you for the recognition. My name is Mrs. B.C. Ade Diba. I so move. Madam has moved, and no one can stop her. <laughs> yes. What do you want me to do now? Okay. Those four, done. And those against? No one. Well, it's unanimous and carried. Okay. I further move as follows. 
that in line with Section 259 of the Confidence and Other Matters Act, comma, and 1990, Professor Chukuka in Wemeka, Mr. Dennis Olisa, Mustafa Bello, directors of the bank, retire by rotation and being eligible for re-election and having offered themselves for re-election be and are hereby re-elected directors of the bank. Seconder, we second. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shew Malam Mikahil, seconded. Seconded. Those four, those four, yes, all of them. Those against, so is carried. Remuneration of the auditors. Be it resolved that the directors be and are hereby authorized to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Seconder, please. Uh, the, the gentleman here on pink tie, the gentleman on pink tie wants to Mr. second. Mr. Chairman, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Before I second, I just oh, want second. to... Oh, second. That's order okay, of the day, second. please. You, okay. need to, you need to go in sequence. Okay, you can come please. back later. Okay. My name is Patrick Ajudua. I hereby second the Thank motion. you, sir. Yeah. Now, those for and those against, so is carried. Director's fees. Be it resolved that the director's fee for 2019 financial year be and is hereby fixed at 20 million only for each director. Who is to second? Okay. The Baba here in the front wants to second. I'm Sashola Abonnure from Ibadan. I thank, second. Thank you for seconding. Those for, uh, uh, those against, so is carried. Item 6, election of audit committee. The bank's article of association requires that the audit committee of the bank be made up of equal number of directors and shareholders. The director's representatives for the audit committee for this new financial year will be as follows. Mr. Engineer Mustafa Bello, Mr. Gabriel Ukbe, and Jeff Ifeyini. The nominations received from the shareholders within the 21 days requirements are stated in the notice of the meeting as follows. Mr. Emo Ajayi, nominated by Timothy Adeshino. Mrs. Bigbe Balogu, nominated by Sangwosu. Professor Obika, nominated by Alaji Farouk Uma. In the absence of any other nominations, I believe they stand unopposed and are hereby elected. This marks the end of the business of the day. Let me use this opportunity. Let me use this. Uh, let me use this opportunity. Uh, let me use this opportunity to thank shareholders for their time. What's most important is um, after the prayers and national term, we will be out there in the foyer as board member to take more questions and first with some of you. So, yeah, it will be thereafter. So now. Can we have Alaji Tambari for closing prayer in a Muslim way? Which, 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 I pray Almighty Allah to help us to help the Nigerian shareholders to return us to our various destinations safely to help our chairman to good him good health prosperity i pray almighty allah to return us to our belt destination safely bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahir rabbil alamin ar rahmanir rahim malik yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta alayhim National anthem, please. National anthem.
Thank you so much. Those who have more questions, the board members who will be at the second floor will ask you to meet the board members in the second floor for us to have some snacks and discuss. Thank you so much. We we'll go straight there. That's the door. We are leaving to the door. We will not take any questions here. We are leaving there. Thank you.